What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and this is your match preview. It's Everton against Spurs. Now I just need to clarify one thing. This is not red. It is salmon. So do not say my dog has got a red colour because I appreciate it may look red on the camera. Anyway, right, more importantly, and you do this, um, Everton take on Spurs at Spurs. We know how difficult this is. We went there last season, we played sensational for 12 minutes and then we got our bottom handed to us several times over and over again. I think it's fair to say that game. I think I remember coming off and doing the match reaction, I said I think we could have lost about 10-0. Um, we were really poor um, and we were, yeah, we were just terrible. Um, we go into this game and I kind of don't know what to expect from Everton. We've been fairly solid all season, so we don't expect loads of to concede loads of goals. However, we conceded three against Manchester United. Yes, two are only counted. The other one, handball, whatever. If people want to say it's harsh or whatever, but yeah. We can still concede three goals. I know, that, as I said, one was handball, but there were three mistakes. So, against the Spurs side that's got that pace, got that quality, Kane has started the season um, really well. It's a tough game. I mean, there's, there's no getting around it. This this side, of where they are in the league, uh, I think they're top of the group in the Champions League. They're a good team. So Everton going into this game, it's a challenge. It's a, uh, it's not just a small challenge. It's a massive challenge because fundamentally, you're asking Everton to go and get a result at probably one of the top four teams in the season next in the league this season. It's a difficult, difficult ask. In terms of Everton, we go there. We've got a no Anthony Gordon. He He's out due to a, a fifth booking of the season. And Frank Lampard in his press conference was, um, he was asked a few questions about that. A few questions, too many, in my opinion. I, you know, we the media and these and these football journalists are very quick to make these, these sort of sweeping statements or, or try and big something up more than it is. You've got Anthony Gordon, who has been having to get back be aggressive when he's needed to be, put a foot in, try and beat people. And look, he hasn't had a fantastic season. I am not going to sit here and blow smoke up to anyone's bottom and say that he's been fantastic this season because he hasn't. Manchester United was his worst performance of the season um, and he hasn't looked great in most of the games otherwise. And, and that, I'm, not, I'm not trying to dig out any player, especially not a young Evertonian who's breaking onto the scene because we've seen this before. We've, we, we've seen this before. Rodwell, Barkley, Rooney, Gordon. We, we, we sit there and sometimes it's very easy for us to point fingers at these players. We've done it with Tom Davis for years. So you build up these assumptions of these players. And one of the things I don't want to build up is the fact that he's a troublemaker because he's getting yellow cards. I don't. I, I think it is the worst thing we can start doing to young players in this league, irrespective of him playing for Everton. So the media, that, that annoyed me a little bit in the press conference. Another thing that annoyed me in this press conference is there was a lot of questions directed at Frank. Frank Lampard, up until... That Manchester United game had gone unbeaten in six games in the Premier League, which is no easy easy thing to do. Four draws, two wins. It's not easy. That is not an easy thing. Back-to-back -back wins for the first time in a long time. And he he's managed to get a feel-good factor around this team. Now, us as fans as well, we've stepped up. We've made sure that the you know the, the flags are out, the, the smoke is there, the pyros are every note. We've made sure that these players know that when they come to Goodison Park, we're going to back them 100%. And it was no different on Man uh, against Manchester United. We were there. We respected them. We supported them. It was a really poor performance. But at least they knew that we were there. And up until that third goal, no one got off their feet. No one got off their feet and left. And on the third goal, yeah, you do see you do see fans leaving early. I, I, I won't judge or comment on people for whatever reason. It's fine. Like, if you need to go early, you go early. If you want to sit there and watch the game, you sit there. You, I don't leave the game early. I watch to the end. And the last 10 minutes of that game give me real hope that at least it's there because... We were not in that game against Manchester United. We were not in it. We were we were shocking. We were shocking. We were as bad against Manchester United as I think we had been all season last season. We were terrible. Yet we only conceded three goals, two goals, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
We scored a goal ourselves. Alex Iwobi getting another one. Yes, he, he makes a mistake, but Alex Iwobi's been sensational this season, so I give him the benefit of the doubt. Garner made a mistake. Fair enough. These things are going to happen. They happen. It, we move on. So we go into this game, and I just don't feel like we should be going there not confident. You know, it, what I want Everton to do is to go there, show up, be defensively strong, like we have been all season, be aggressive if we need to be, and, and just go and try and deliver a good job. If he needs to go and play five at the back in this game, I don't actually have a problem with that as long as we're thinking, right, are we going to play the ball over the top? Are we going to use that pace? Are we going to try and get in? Because we've seen that this season, that that works. We saw it against Aston Villa. We saw it against Forest. We saw it against Brentford. We saw it against Leeds. These balls over the top, these balls through the channel, create real problems. So it almost doesn't matter if you go five at the back and you sit a little bit deeper. That's fine because... That's why we were doing that against Manchester United. We sat so deep. We actually sat too deep against Manchester United that it allowed them to play, just play and play through us and have lots of the ball and create chances. And that's where the goals come from because when we give the ball away and we were deep, they were already in on goal and that created problems. When Alex Iwobi lost the ball, we, we had gone into almost a really weird state where the right back was out of position, Coleman, he was completely out of position, balls come through and Ronaldo's in. So Everton need to just counter that this week. Everton need to be just a little bit more mindful of the gaps that they're leaving, the position on the pitch and how deep and how forward they want to go. For me, I'll go with pretty much the same team. I'll bring in McNeil for Gordon as I have done. You know, people have said, and Lampard said today, that Calvert-Lewin's probably not going to be starting, essentially, because he's not fit enough. He's not being rushed through his intensity and his training. And that's fine. But this is the sort of game where he would be useful. This is the sort of game where we can hold up the ball. This is the sort of game where he would cause problems. And, you know, I'm, I'm still not at all enamoured with Mopé. I'm not. And I'm not going to sit here again and, and be all negative about it that it's not a criticism of him he's just I don't feel like he's done a lot since he's joined I understand he weren't getting in the Brighton team so why should be in it being an Everton team and I'm not even saying Brighton aren't better than us because technically on paper they clearly are they clearly are that they're, they're much higher in the league I think they've got four more points than we have they finished above us last season so I'm not going to sit here and say that Brighton are worse than Everton but my point is Neil Mulpay wasn't the answer in the summer but yet, yeah, he's in this position and he's going to have to play. And what I want to see, I want to see him hold that ball a little bit better. I want to see him being a little bit snide. I don't want to see so many bounces off his left and right foot. I don't want to see him bouncing off his chest and going towards our goal again. I want to see if the ball goes into his feet, little pirouette on the turn and off we go. He's not the quickest so he needs players to be playing off him who have got that pace. And this is where we need more from Tamari Gray. This is where we need even more from Alex Iwobi, who's been great. We need more from McNeil or Gordon or whoever plays on the wing. This is what we need. This is fact. This is fundamentals. And until we get that back, um, you know, I, th I think this is really just sort of managing expectations. Calvert-Lewin can't come back quick enough. And we, we saw that. I would argue we saw that against Manchester United because the moment he come on, more balls in the box, he's creating problems, he's causing issues, he's he's running the channel a little bit better, he's quicker than Malpa. You know, I, I felt a little bit more reassured when he was on the pitch. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm his biggest fan. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not his biggest fan. But what I will say is it was a different style of play. It was more direct. We had created six chances after... 90 minutes when we'd only created five chances in the 90 minutes before that. So, if, if it was ever going to be a moment in that game where we were going to come back, it was then. So, we're going against Spurs and we've got to play clever. We've got to win our set pieces. We've got to, we've got to create chances from corners, free kicks. If we're going to go forward, we make sure there's a man covering. We don't want to leave ourselves overexposed in this game because that's what happened last season. We were overexposed and we got, we got done over and over and over again. The worst one was the Son one. I seem to remember him absolutely turning Coleman and off he went. He was gone. And that was really disappointing to see. It was it was it was even worse because we were so off it. And like we could all see as fans we sat there and we were like, he's got this wrong. Like Lampard got it completely wrong. 
There was a lot of questions directed at him today, and I felt some of them were a little bit harsh about his development. And he, I think he managed them really well when he was saying things like, of course, I've progressed, you know, I've been manager at Derby, I've been manager at Chelsea, etc. You know, you learn every day. And he was like, somebody asked him, I think it's a report from the BBC, they said to him, um, do you feel like you've proven people wrong? And he says, no, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Because how can he? Because every single time he gets a dodgy result or a bad performance by Everton, he... he there's more time focused on that than there is the six games prior where he'd been fantastic and he got most of his, his decisions right, his substitutions right, Everton were good. So it disappoints me that, that these things happen. It disappointed me that some of the substitutions didn't ha happen quicker against Manchester United and that is a criticism that I can give. But we've just got to go into this game with more confidence than we would have had last season if we'd have lost the game because every time we lost last season we were on the floor we were rock bottom and these players they'll still be fragile to it so what they need to do is get up brush themselves down and go again and it might be that we don't get a result at Spurs but then we've got to go again at Newcastle we've got to go again against Palace we've got to go again because if we don't as, as good as the season has been okay so far, we're 12th in the league, 10 points, three defeats against Chelsea, Manchester United and away at Aston Villa, who, you know, as much as we hate the Gerrard thing, they aren't any mugs. They're not mugs. They've got some decent players in that team. I can't sit here and say that I'm massively devastated by those three, three results. We've gone and won away from home for the first time in a long time since I remember, certainly the Leicester game last season. So that makes me happy. So all in all, I just think we need to keep this up. We've got Bournemouth in there as well. That's a place where Everton would, would want to try and get three points, of course. So there's no negatives so far. There's no negatives. And if Everton can go to Spurs, get a point, I think everyone would be happy with that. I, I don't think any Evertonian would not be happy going to Spurs right now for a point. I don't want to settle for a point. I love to go to every game and go, yes, we're going to get three points, you know, up the toughies, you know, we're going to win. But a more realistic approach, where we are right now, I'll take a point. And I think it's a difficult point to get. But I think we've got to go there with commitment, intensity, aggression. We've got to be committed, solid. We've got to be... We've got to listen to players like Cody, to Garner, to Tarkowski, um, to Jordan in goal. You've got to listen to players a little bit further up the pitch. We've got these qualities where they do try and lead. Because if we don't, then we'll struggle. Because we won't have that communication throughout the team either. So, look, it's a tough, tough game. My score prediction's 1-1. One, one. Wouldn't surprise me if we lose. I'd be surprised if we win. And I happily take a point. And I think... I, I don't think anyone can criticise me for that. Um, I want us to be better. And I, th I, I truly believe we're going in the right direction. We've just got to... We've got to bounce back. That's where we are. Guys, I'll see you soon. Keep smiling. Peace.